Hello, my name is Lorraine and I would like to welcome you today to our service here in the Apostolic Church in Thistlewood Gardens. We hope that you will enjoy the service, the Word of God, which will be preached. We hope also that you will enjoy the praise and the worship. We just want to bless you today, so welcome everyone.
Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Christmas coming soon, isn't it? But nobody like if even I'm over place, I'm saying Christmas coming. I say, oh, don't hell. <laughs> you know, because everyone thinking only expensive. They never think about the Jesus birthday. <laughs> anyway, I just want to sh- share two more small thoughts today. I'm just saying small story at the first time start. One of the old man, he's a very, very rich, but he's living long time in the village. So he doesn't know what's a new thing happened in the city and town. I mean, like a lift escalator. He never say it. He's in the village, he's live, and then he thought he want to visit in the town, I mean city. So he booking in the five star hotel and he bring in his wife and they seeing everything in the first time. They never know that's a lift. They feel like that's one of the room. People coming and going up and then coming back, people coming different way. And he really watching what is that. And uh, one of the old women went in that room and after five minutes door open, one young girl coming out. <laughs> and what he thought, Oh, something they making in a scientific, you know, the world changing lot. So there's something change, and he said to his wife, "You as well go and stand." And then when the door opened, you come in uh, with the younger. <laughs> and this is like an imaginary story, but what I'm just trying to say, we need to know the truth. What is in the truth? If we doesn't know the truth, we feel like the same thing. I'm saying this story, but this is a way for all the things. Some uh, John uh, chapter 8, 20, uh, 32 saying, and you shall know the truth, and truth shall make you free. So you need to know the all, the, but everyone, we all know, we are all saved people, and we are coming from, the, from Sunday school and youth meeting, we all know, but sometimes I'm forgetting. I'm going to be say the truth, only one small truth, you all know well. That truth, I'm just going to be explained, not to worry. That's a truth. That's really, really, as a great truth. And in Bible says, lot of explanation. Look at the birds. Look at the field in the lilies. Even the lilies, they say, mentioning in the field, they not even mention the garden. You know, if the garden means we are maintaining, always we water and clean it and give the extra food. But in Bible saying, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. Even God look at saying the simple thing, look at the birds and how they are. Now how he not going to believe us? He's saying the word, come to me, all you who are worried and burdened, and I'll give you the rest. That's really, really the truth. Please, each and everyone, believe the truth. I'm just saying my own, own story, you know, all well. I always saying that me and my husband and um, Jessilia, we went in last month uh, just for a shopping in Belfast. And Jessilia have a small, uh, like a coat, and she gave to me. And not normally lose it, but that day I lose it somewhere. Once we come back, she asked, Mommy, where is it? And then I don't know. We are went a lot of shops, so I can, I don't know with, where I leave it. And then she said, uh, Mommy, you know well how much I like it, you miss it. I, I, I know well as well because she always using that one. Then I say, I'm really, really so sorry. You just come with me. Whatever you want, you will get it. And that day, uh, punishment of me, whatever she's looking, I need to buy for her. But even though when I come back, I, I really feel like always, I know she's really, really like it. That she gave to me, I didn't miss it. I'm just be thinking, which shop I buy it? And after two weeks, I will find the shop. And then I went, and that, that's the only one hanging for that. I'm so, so happy. And then I buy, and I come on home. I say to Joji, look, I miss it that. I got it the same thing. And the Joji look and say, mm. I already, uh, already ordered it online. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this, and what I'm trying to explain this. I know just less spoiled, but I'm just to what I'm explaining. We are only the worldly father and mother. We are looking for that much what she like, what we do. Like, you know, but our heavenly father, he make you and me like a own image. And he died for us. 
he is really really loving god he say to each and every one of you not to worry god bless you everyone Praise the Lord. Let's let's read from God's word this morning before uh, before we we go any further. I want to read to you from a very famous portion of scripture. I'll be turning this mic on. I think I've it turned off. It's a famous portion of scripture taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter fifteen. A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of thy substance that's fallen to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there he wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that country. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to one of the citizens of the country. And he said, sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would feel faint, having filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. But when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough? And to spare, and I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of your hired servants. And he rose and came to his father. But while he was yet afar off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in sight in thy sight I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servant, Bring forth quickly the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his finger on his hand, and a shoe on his feet, and bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and make merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again, he was lost and is found, and they be began to be merry. <clears throat> and we'll stop the reading there. You can go on in the story and find that the older brother gets upset with him making merry. This uh, parable has been spoken on probably so many times that people look at it so many ways. But I, when we came to today, I was thinking about Remembrance Sunday with this. And how many people like to remember things? How many things do you like not to remember? Yeah, there's some things you don't want to remember. Memory's a strange thing, isn't it? It, it can flood us and it can affect us when we remember. It's wonderful. When, when you look, you, you see people. One of my, my friends many years ago, <clears throat> when I was training to be a nurse, uh, talked about, he, he, he came up with a new disease. I don't think it's in the, in the textbooks, to be honest. I don't think it's even, even there yet. He called it post-vacational depression. In other words, 
He says, symptoms are shuffling through old photographs, looking wantonly out the window of nicer times. I was thinking, you know, over the last year, many of us haven't traveled to the foreign fields that we might have done years ago. So you're shuffling through old photographs and remembering. And our memory has, a, has an important part to play, not just in keeping us focused and building up our hopes, but in remembering that we are blessed. I mean, this morning we come round the Lord's table, we're remembering that we're blessed. And in this story about the prodigal son, it's interesting because the, the, he, he comes to his father and he says, Dad, give me everything that's coming to me. So the father gives him all the money that he had and he goes off and he wastes it all in his living and he's left with nothing. He's left with absolutely nothing. All his friends that were around him when he had plenty of money were all gone. There was a famine in the land. He now was hungry. You know, we sometimes take for granted so much that we have. This young man took for granted all that he had. It's important to remember how valuable things are. It's important to remember how valuable our families are. It's important to remember how valuable our loved ones are. It's important to remember... What we have is a blessing. Paul, when he talks in Philippians, says, I, I know how to be content wherever I'm at. He knew that whatever he had was a blessing from God. We heard it this morning from Jancy said, don't be worrying. Look at the birds. You know, they, they, they don't feed or, or sow or reap, yet God looks after them. We need to remember that God is looking after us. And there's a wonderful phrase in this parable that, 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 that often has gripped me when I've read it. I've read it many times. It says that when he came to his senses, when he came to his senses, when he came to who he was, when he realized what he had lost, when he realized what he'd forgotten, and he starts to remember. You know, he remembers that his father's house is a house of plenty. He remembered that in his father's house, there wasn't a single servant that was going hungry. In fact, there was bread to spare. So he started to remember. You see, memory is important to us. It reminds us of the good things. It also reminds us of the bad things. Anybody ever put their hand on the fire as a child? Anybody ever get burnt as a child? Yeah? I guarantee you, next time you went near a fire, you were going, no, not doing that again. The memory of the pain, you know? Ever did anything stupid? Not doing that again. The memory of it, we don't do it again. This young man was remembering that he had done something stupid. He had wasted all his money. He had wasted all the wealth. He had left it all behind. And now he remembered that there was plenty in his father's house. And I was thinking, you know, Lord, that's a lot like us. So often, we take the blessings of God for granted. So often we can forget just how much God has done for us. And so here he comes and he goes, right now I've remembered this. I remember that, that in my father's house there's plenty. You know, a few weeks ago we talked on Psalm 23. Thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. My cup overflows. There is an overflowing in the presence of God. There is a blessing for us in our father's house. This young man came back to his senses. He remembered that it was there. And so he sets out to return to the father. And there's many people today that have wasted their lives and wasted all that God has given them on chasing dreams when they've forgotten the blessings that God has already placed in their lives. We need to remember what God has done for us. And then we need to do what this young man did. He then came back to his father's house. He came back to his father's house. Do you know, when we're talking, and maybe people online, maybe, you hear this, maybe some of you here this morning, there's things that God has done for you that you may have forgotten about. And God's saying, I want you to remember, I have a ministry in you. I have a blessing for you. I have a calling for your life. The enemy's tried to rob you of it. You've let other things get in the way of it. You've let circumstances and situations come and get you. This is what happened to this young man. 
he had wasted all that he had. And then he was feeling depressed and down and hungry and forgotten and abandoned. And the whole time the father was waiting on him. The whole time the father was searching for him. We know that because when you read the story it says, even when he was afar off, the father came running towards him. He was looking for the return of his son. Do you know that our heavenly fathers were looking for the return of his sons and daughters? All of us. Into the purposes that he has for us. Into that relationship with him. Into that place where we're doing what God has called us to do. He's calling us back. But the son had to make a decision to come back. And so he comes back. And of course he's quite contrite. And rightly so to be honest. He's coming back and saying, Father, I'm just going to be a servant in your house. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want nothing else. You know, I'll just, I'll just, just as long as I have enough bread to eat, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. He's coming very humble. This is not the arrogant young man we see at the start of the parable, demanding. Not that anybody would be demanding. Not that children would be demanding of parents. Not that life would be demanding. You know, he's, no, he's no longer this demanding, petulant young man. He's now coming back humbled by the circumstances he's come through. But he had forgotten. He had stopped remembering how much his father had. And when he came to that, he came back to God. But there's something else he forgot. There's something else he forgot here that's really important. There's something else that he didn't realize that's vital. When he came back, he came back expecting to be placed as a servant. He forgot how much his father loved him. He forgot how much his father cared. And yet we see when he comes home, the father goes, right, come on, put the best robe on him. Put the robe of righteousness around him. Get the ring, put it on his hand. The father's love is there for his sons and daughters. For all of us. And it's so easy sometimes for us to forget that. For to forget how much God loves you. For to get, forget how much he cares for you. Do you know the symbolism that's in, uh, that's in those verses is, is very, very dramatic. The robe of righteousness. Put in the warmth. Covering over all the sin. Put the robes around him. Cover over the mess. I mean, I can guarantee you. He's been starving. He has been in poverty. He has had a long journey. The clothes he was wearing were probably in rags. They were probably tattered and dirty. And what does the father say? Get the robe and put it round him. Cover over all the sin. Cover over all the mistakes. Cover over all the dirt and all the problems with my love. That's the first thing that the father does. He says, right, sir, get the cloak, put it round him. We cover that over. For my son has returned. Such was the father's love. And not only that, he then says, put the ring on his hand. Ring has a significance, as we know, uh, when you get married or when you get engaged, there's usually a little thing called a ring. What's that saying? That ring is a signif that's to signify that covenant, that promised love. It signifies the promise of love. That I'm not forgot you. This is forever. You know, when couples stand to get married and, and they exchange rings, the vows they say is, I will love you till death do us part. It's signifying the promise of the love. So the father, he covers over all the sin and then he puts the ring on his finger signifying the undying promise of his love towards his son. And then on top of that, he says, look, let's have a feast. Let's have a party. You see, we need to remember how much the Father loves us. We need to remember, not only has He provision in the house, but His love will cover over a multitude of sins. His love is promised to us eternally. It doesn't change. If you're a child of God this morning, He's placed those robes upon you. If you're a child of God this morning, He's placed the ring on your finger. You're His. God's hand is upon your life. If you've wandered away from God this morning, then like the prodigal son, it's time to come back. 
Now this happens not only to those that are unsaved, sometimes it happens even to the saints of God. We walk away. This young man was part of the father's family. He had walked away from what God had had for him. He had forgotten the provision and the love of his father. But then he came to his senses. Then he came to his senses. You see, at the core of the problem here was the young man at the start of this thought he knew better than the father. It's funny of how many of us think we know best. Who knows best? You know, if I asked, if I was asked in the house, you know, husband and wife, who knows best? You know, how many of us think we know best? We know better than the father. This young man thought he knew better than the father. And sometimes when we think we know better than the Father, that's a big mistake. It's our Heavenly Father that knows best. It's His love that provides for us. It's His grace that keeps us. It's His Word that is the truth that sets us free that we heard about earlier this morning. When we start doing things in our own strength, we start walking down the road of the prodigal son. But when we remember, when we come to our senses, we remember who he is. That, that lovely celebration, that robe wrapped around us. Anybody ever put on a nice warm coat on a winter's day? Mm-hmm. How does it feel? Mm. Yeah, it just feels good, doesn't it? It feels warm, it feels secure, it feels safe. The wind can blow all at once, I'm fine. The rain can come down all at once, I'm dry underneath this for I'm covered. I'm covered in the name of Jesus. And the love of the Father covers us. Keeps us. So that son came back and he's covered over. All the blemishes are gone, all the problems are gone, all the worries and stresses are gone. He doesn't have to worry where he's going to get something to eat tonight because his father's provided for him. God provides for us. We need to return to the place where we've been called to. In his presence. It's important that we remember these things. It's important that we remember that God loves us. It's important we remember that God cares about us. Because when we come to our senses, we come into blessing. So many people want blessing, but we want blessing our way. We want blessing my way. So that was the prodigal son. He wanted blessing his way. Give me my portion now. Let me do it my way. But eventually he had to return to the father's house. Of course, when we start looking from a selfish viewpoint, we can forget. Not only did the prodigal son forget, but his older brother also forgot. Because when the prodigal son came back and God started to bless him, the father started to bless the the younger son, what did the elder brother do? He was really delighted, wasn't he? He threw a temper tantrum. What are you doing, father? You're wasting the good food on this waster. That was his attitude. This this person has taken all you, and you've wasted it. He had forgotten that he was also blessed by the same provision from the Father. He was also blessed with the same love. You know, sometimes when people look at someone else and what they've got and their blessing, they get jealous. Good news for you. God blesses us with what we need. God takes care of us in ways that pass our understanding. You know, isn't it wonderful that Marianne's got a new Ferrari? Hallelujah. <laughs> she wishes, but you know what I mean. God, not that it's about finances or money. I'm just using that as a joke because we get you get the point. When was someone's blessed? Isn't it wonderful that somebody preaches better than you? Isn't it wonderful that somebody has a better... Isn't it wonderful that God blesses? When we start to delight in what God's doing and lose sight of what we want 
See, that was what Christ did for us. He lost sight of what, what was his will. He said, Father, not my will, but thine. When we come into that selfish will of a petulant child like a prodigal son, we can end up in want, we can end up in distress, we can end up with everything gone. But the good news this morning is that we can return to the Father. We can remember. We can come to our senses and know God's blessing. I, I'm just, this is the word that the Lord laid in my heart over the last couple of days as I've been praying for this morning. And I, I believe there's people probably going to watch this online, there's people maybe in here this morning who drifted a bit far from God. And God's saying, it's time to come to your senses. Because when you come to your senses and you relax and come to Him, He'll restore the ministries that the enemy's been trying to destroy. This young man was useless to the Father in a foreign land. Do you know, it's an interesting story because you have to understand how far this young man fell. We're talking about a Jewish story. We're talking about a young man from a Jewish lineage feeding pigs. Think about that. He'd gone as low as it could get. He'd gone as far away as it could possibly go. Yet God restored him. You see, God's in the business of restoring people's attitudes, hearts, ministries, and lives. He wants to place his robe around you afresh this morning. That whatever's gone before is covered over. Whatever's upset you, whatever's left this mark on you, is going to be covered over by his robes of righteousness this morning. That your ministry can be set free. Let's pray. Let's just bow our heads. Father, we thank you that the robes of your righteousness wrapped around us. Lord, let us remember your love to us this morning. Let us not forget what you've done for us. Even as we come round the table this morning, Lord, and we remember the work of the cross, we thank you, Father, that we know that there is plenty in your house. And there's blessings for each one. And I thank you for those that are here this morning, Lord, that the enemy has brought frustration and hunger and difficulties to try and distract from the ministries that God has given them. But Lord, right now you're placing those robes of righteousness upon them afresh. A fresh start. Coming to their senses, coming back to you, Lord God. So that you might restore the ministries. That you might restore that which you have for them. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy now flowing into lives. Lord, I just pray for each person here right now. There's some whose hearts have been dragged away from where you want them to be. But this morning you're calling them back. Reminding them afresh of the depths of your love. Of the eternal promise of your love. Of the eternal covenant of your love. Of the eternal blessing that you poured into their lives. No matter where we go, Lord, you, you never leave us nor forsake us. So, Father, just cover us right now with your precious blood. And I not only pray for those ministries restored, Lord, but you'll release those giftings as well. But we thank you for this in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, continue to speak, Lord. Continue to draw us close to you. Bring to our remembrance your word and all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. If the Lord's spoken to you this morning and you want to talk to me about it, please do so before you leave. You know, Because I believe God wants to release ministries and lives. I believe that the Lord has giftings in your life that's yet to be revealed. Don't struggle. Come back to your Father. Yeah. Let Him pour His love and His grace in.
whatever 